Jason, come on over. How you doing? Well, how are you? Good. Thanks for doing this yeah, for us today. Um, let's move you. Let's move you right about there. I think maybe a little bit more. Let's put let's put you right about there. Why don't you come around the front here, and just go ahead and have a seat and put one foot up on the on the stool, and let's maybe turn you. We'll start off with turning you this way. Interesting thing when you pose when you pose women and men. There, there are some rules in posing that we'll talk about as we, as we roll through the, the day and, and certainly for tomorrow too. With men, you can pretty much get away with doing, you know, anything. With women, there's some very specific things you can't do uh, and, and that you shouldn't do. But with, with him and with this color top, uh, we have no problem doing pretty much whatever we want to do. I would say let's turn you a tiny bit further that way. And then from your waist, just kind of lean over your belt a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bring your head to me just a little. And let's just let the top of your head just roll over to the side right there. John, can you just bring that this way a bit? And let me make sure our tether is that's hooked up. That sees that. And let me turn this guy on. You got my handy dandy meter. How's the height on this? Uh, it's going to need to go a little bit higher, I think. Not too much. So yeah, right in there is going to be good. Let me see your eyes. Yeah, that's going to work. Interesting thing about working with John is I didn't have to tell John, John, where's my light meter? He's already found it. It's around his neck already. That's what I like about John. <laughs> We've done this a few times together. A few. All right, let's try one right there. Here we go. And if you'll notice, folks, I'm taking my, my meter reading with the dome of the meter aimed toward my light source. The reason here is this, this incident dome literally gives me reality as long as I use it in such a way that there's no shadow on the dome when I make the exposure. If there's shadow on the dome when I make the exposure, I got myself a problem because I'm going to get a little bit of overexposure. So aiming it toward the camera is fine if my light is within 45 degrees of my camera. But if I'm going around a little bit further, you really need to meter back toward the light source itself. At 16 even. Well, there you go. I love 16. 16 is my favorite number. So we're shooting at, uh, I'll set my shutter speed up to 125 just because it's my de facto standard. Uh, Terry here, just a quick one, Tony. You yep. always keep the dome out in these circumstances? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, I do, and some people don't. Uh, I've, I've just always found that I've had better luck with my dome uh, in the out position. If it goes in, I think it was designed for flat art copy. In other words, if I've got a copy, uh, do a flat art copy of a painting, for example, if I recess the dome, it's very exact. And so I could lay that on a piece of copy board and move it around corner to corner, up and down, corner to corner, and I could get exactly what uh, the reality is on each of those exact areas around. With a face, I can fudge a little bit, and, it, and it's a little bit more forgiving, but I'm still going to get an accurate reading. So the dome out seems to work. The only challenge is sometimes I'll have top light that's causing me a problem, and I'll just need to stick my hand over the top of it just to make sure it's, there's no stray light hitting the top of the dome. But for the most part, yeah, for the most part, uh, what I'm talking about is with the dome, uh, with, with, this is the Siconic 758, and I have the ability to turn that in this way or bring it out this way. So bring, bringing it out just to me seems to make sense, uh, and, I'm, and I get good true readings. So. You're doing uh, differential measuring, so you have two or three lights. You it, always keep it out. Always. One to the next to always. the next. Always. Okay. And I make sure, and that's a, and that's a good point to, to illustrate. If, I'm, if there's multiple lights on the set, I've already established right here the exposure on Jason is going to be F-16. With it right at his face, aimed at the light, bam, F-16. Now, if I aim an accent light from back here, for example, this way, I want to make sure that that light doesn't affect that reading for that light. So I'll make sure that this light is hidden and I'm not getting any hit on that dome from any other sources. And it just, it just gives me, it just makes me think about it as tenth accuracy, one tenth accuracy. I want to be accurate. I want my exposures to be accurate so I can do it that way. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's shoot that. I wonder why that's giving me a 2.5 aperture <laughs> instead of, here we go. Okay, I'm up here at F16 now. Yep. I think, I'm, I think I'll go ahead and set this. Actually, I'm just going to leave it horizontal for the screen. I think it's easier to read. I'll just leave it horizontal. Know that if it feels like it's a vertical shot, I would have probably shot it vertical. 
Uh, Jason, do this for me. I need you to sit up real good and straight and then kind of lean forward right over your belt. Interesting thing, I always say that, don't tell people to lean forward because they'll lean right at you. I don't want them to lean at me, I want them to lean right over their belt. And then just let, the t let your head turn to me just a bit. Yeah, now the top of your head over right there. Right there, right there, right there. Now you're cooking, now you're cooking. Boy, I'll tell you, these young, good looking guys. <laughs> I'll tell you, I have no patience for this sort of thing. <laughs> Let me just scoot right in here. Great. Great, great. I just got my new glasses and my diopter is a, a little bit wonky. There we go. Good. Let me just set that right there. Here we go. Good. Let's see what happens. So, the, th the interesting thing about photographing men, and I think I'm shooting raw, so I'm just sending the raw files over. They'll take about a second or two to get over there. Uh, but what's fun about photographing men especially is, can I open up the, uh, let me open up the uh, develop module. Can I do it this way? Uh, not uh, mirrored. Oh, well, let me just, I just want to hit the develop so I can, I just want to see my histogram. That's the main thing. There we go. And I'm not seeing the histogram. Where are we? Anyway, the, the main thing here is I can't see the, the finished screen from where I'm looking, but you guys can see uh, the exposure looks pretty, pretty terrific. The color balance looks pretty terrific. There you go. Now we got histogram. So now let's talk about, let's talk about the picture. In terms of quality of light, well, I'm not sure that it's the greatest yet. But in terms of quantity of light, how's the exposure look? Exposure looks pretty good. I didn't, I didn't try to second guess the meter. I did exactly what the meter told me to do. Color balance, what do you think the color balance looks like? Looks pretty darn good. He looks like he looks. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Jason, I'm just, it's just a thing. You look like you look. I use in my, in my settings here, uh, I'm, this, these lights are balanced for daylight. I don't have to second guess those or use a color checker chart in these frames with pro photo lights because I just set my preset and my camera to daylight. These lights are set for daylight and they, they seem to be reliable at full power, half power, quarter power and, and all their different light lights across the board. They're all balanced for daylight and they just work for me. So I don't have to, that's, that's one more thing I don't have to think about and try to test and try to find ways to see if it's going to make sense and see if it's going to work. It just works. Um, so in this case, obviously, it's a small edge light. It's a cutting light source. John, bring it toward me just a little bit. And a little bit more. I'm just trying to look at that, both of his eyes. I just want to look at it. I want to go, take a good look at a catch light in both eyes. <clears throat> Here we go. Good, good, good. That looks pretty good right there. Good. Uh, Lens-wise today, I'm shooting the 85 uh, one four, the 85 one four Sigma. And uh, I'm seeing great sharpness with this lens. Uh, I'm new to this lens, but I'm seeing really good things with it. And it's, it's rapidly becoming uh, a new thing that I kind of like a lot. So, so basically if I zoom in on his eyes, you can see, uh, you can see the catch light in the eyes, which is a mirrored image of the light source. That's what a specular highlights defined as mirrored image of whatever's creating the light source. So uh, it's a small source, it's very highly polished, sharp edge shadow from the nose, highlight on the tip of the nose. Is it bad that it looks like it's a small shiny source, a small specular source? No, it is appropriate for some sub subjects in some situations. It does work. It works great with good smooth skin also and it works great for men and ruddy complexions it works really good. It works great if you've got a subject that's got a, one of those weathered old faces and you just want to bring out some grit in that face. Use a smaller source and you can bring out. Think about, think about the definition of what is texture. Texture is nothing more than light skimming across a surface creating little miniature highlights and shadows. Right? If I've got wrinkles, they're going to be more pronounced with a smaller source and especially if it's at an acute angle skimming across a face. Then if I bring it closer to the camera and flat light something, and then all the shadows and highlights go away. Interesting thing about wrinkles, there needs to be a discussion about wrinkles, how in fact 
What do wrinkles appear as? From what do you think? What do you think a wrinkle appears as? Shadow. On light skin. On dark skin, wrinkles appear as highlights. Totally different discussion because because I've got to control the shadows and or the highlights. If I've got a couple coming in for an engagement, I mean for an anniversary portrait, and they're celebrating their 50th anniversary, I've got to know that. What's my first clue? They've been married 50 years. There's probably a wrinkle or two involved. Not something I want to use with a small source if I'm trying to create a complementary likeness. I'm going to want a bigger source, probably closer to the camera, to minimize that texture. Now, if I'm doing a, you know, an old salty dog sea captain, you know, wearing a seafaring cap, holding a corn cob pipe on the, you know, the coast of Maine, with a great old grizzly beard, I might want a small source to create more of that grizzly look. So it's all about what is the intended use? What are you trying to say with the picture? Whatever tool you need, that's the one you need to grab and touch. I think this looks good with his face. I think it works pretty good. Now, is it, is it dark in the background? Yeah, I've got nothing going on here except the small source on him. We'll fix that, we'll work on that. Now, in terms of posing, he looks like he's falling out of the picture a little bit. So watch this. Jason, all I want you to do is take your right hand and push it out towards your knee. A little bit further, a little bit further. I just need to see a tiny bit of that back arm, that back shoulder. Now I'm seeing a little bit of it in the frame and it just changed the picture completely and it made it a little bit more. Uh, it gave uh, what my, my first mentor told me, any photograph of a person where they're sitting and they're kind of isolated in the frame, you got to have a base to the frame. Your composition needs a base. Well, now I've got a base. See it? You see the difference between the two? If I go back and forth from that one to that one, there he looks like he's going to fall over. There, he's anchored. He's got a base. So think about that in terms of posing one, two, three people. Give them a base somehow, and it, it's almost like you're creating stability in the picture.